Our next presenter is uh, is uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Jalil. Um, uh, Dr. Jalil is uh, currently serving as Assistant Deputy Minister for the Western Economic Diversification Canada. Uh, prior to this position, Dr. Jalil worked in the Agriculture Research Branch of, of Saskatchewan uh, Ministry of Ag, and uh, and most recently as Executive Director. Um, he has served on various boards, including AgWest Bio, uh, uh, Prairie Agriculture Machinery Institute, or PAMI, and uh, POS Biosciences. So he's probably a familiar face to, to many of us in the Saskatchewan ag industry. Um, his diverse career includes experiences in many areas, including teaching, research, and administration. And he's going to give a presentation on prairie pros pr prosperity um, and uh, a vision for management of water resources across Saskatchewan and the prairies. And with that, I'll hand it off to you, uh, Dr. Jalil. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Joe, uh, uh, for the kind introduction. So it's uh, thank you for the opportunity to virtually speak with all of you. Last year, uh, I shared with you our work that uh, was done by that time uh, until then. And uh, today's presentation, I will be providing a short overview of WD's work over the past uh, almost uh, 22 months uh, with a focus uh, on our report Prairie Prosperity and its recommendation fit into the recent uh, irrigation expansion announcement. I will also touch on the establishment uh, uh, of Canada Water Agency and what WD has been up to these past few months. Uh, at the uh, end of this pro presentation, I would be happy to uh, field any questions you may have. Uh, Today, along with me, I have also joined by Rhonda Lang, um, Devin Bojo, and Mark Dion, who worked very closely with me in developing our report. So moving on uh, slide two. The story of WD became uh, involved in water security began on, on January 11th, 2019, uh, almost two years ago when Prime Minister uh, Trudeau and Minister Rolf Goodale convened a round table in Regina to discuss water security challenges in the region. From that discussion and with the context of recommendation from Canada, Water, uh, Canada Economic Strategy Table for Agri-Food and the anticipated impact of uh, environmental changes, changes, Budget 2019 mandated WD to work with partners and stakeholders to begin developing a water and land management strategy for the prairies. <clears throat> slide three, next slide. WD began working towards our mandate in April of 2019, and uh, it lasted until around August uh, of this year. During this time, WD undertook stake stakeholder engagement with the intention of understanding the challenges and opportunities for enhanced water security in Saskatchewan and across the prairies. To begin, WD hosted the Prairie Water Summit in June of 2019, which brought together stakeholders from across Saskatchewan and the other prairie provinces to discuss water management opportunities and challenges. I'm certain that uh, few of you were in attendance uh, at that summit. We also started to collaborate with provincial officials uh, at the Water Security Agency and uh, elsewhere to expand our understanding of Saskatchewan's water security opportunities and challenges. As uh, we are always keen to tell people and don't shy away from it, that this was a new file for us. So we really relied on the expertise, advice, and knowledge of many other people and organization. Water Smart out of Alberta were also instrumental in helping us to conduct workshops with water management stakeholders in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. And throughout the course of our involvement in this file, WD also engaged with some uh, with the municipal officials, indigenous partners, business stakeholders agricultural producers, industry association, non-government organization, and academics to advance our work and understanding. We also engaged Global Institute of Water Security to utilize their expertise. Next slide, please. 
Uh, at the same time, as we were conducting this broad engagement, we commissioned two feasibility studies from Clifton Associates on potential irrigation expansion projects in Saskatchewan, while also conducting internal research. We also commissioned a baseline hydrology and issues identification report for the prairies in partnership with the WaterSmart and a study uh, on the available financing models for irrigation projects. I won't get into the numbers, but as I'm sure you are aware, these feasibility studies shows that irrigation expansion would create considerable long-term economic opportunity in the Saskatchewan and would help diversify Saskatchewan agriculture sector. And uh, I think Julian uh, earlier outlined a few of those. Next slide. All of this concurrent work that I touched on contributed to the creation of public report, the WD recommendations titled Prairie Prosperity, a vision for the management of water resources across Saskatchewan and the prairies. The report was released in August with the endorsement from Minister Jolly, and Parliamentary Secretary Terry Duguid and the Government of Canada. Mm. Uh, on this slide, we have included a link to the WD uh, website. We have the full report, a number of interview style videos and uh, with irrigators, and also links to an interactive app uh, on the benefits of irrigation in Saskatchewan can all be accessed. On this web page, anyone can also request additional material from Clif Clifton and WaterSmart. Uh, Water Next slide. Yeah. Okay. As you all know, in July of 2020, the provincial government in Saskatchewan announced their intention to develop the website, uh, sorry, West Side Irrigation Project and the Upper Capel Canal Irrigation Project. This announcement parallel WD's own primary recommendation in our report, which called for federal provincial collaboration to advance the Upper Capel Canal and the West Side Irrigation Project. There were several factors that influenced WD's own recommendation. To begin, Water availability changes will impact some of the most important food, product, product, uh, food producing regions in the world, regions of California and South Central US are overdrawing their water reservoirs and are relying on unsustainable irrigation uh, used to produce their crops. This will provide Saskatchewan an opportunity to sustainably use our water resources to help feed a growing global population and provide diversification to its agricultural industry. The economic benefits from expanding ir expanded irrigation as reported in the feasibility studies and as the experience in Alberta has shown can be substantial. The benefits derived from irrigation development are also widely dispersed among farmers, suppliers, the local community, governments, and other stakeholders. And uh, as Julian has already uh, touched upon those, resulting in a positive economic benefit, benefits for many individuals and communities, not only agriculture producers. And also the COVID pandemic made the prospect of funding large infrastructure projects with long-term benefits more palatable than they might have otherwise been. The recommendation to advance both irrigation projects was provided with the knowledge that every effort needs to be taken to ensure the the environmental impacts from these irrigation projects need to be addressed, understood, and minimized over time. 
WD is hopeful that issues stemming from reduced water flow through Saskatchewan River Delta and any increased contaminants from agricultural input will be minimized through research, best practices, early stakeholder engagements, and through a robust impact uh, assessment process. We think that uh, impact assessment process will be critical part of this environmental review as it may establish conditions for the project to proceed. As our team has learned throughout our involvement in this file, and more recently, there are advantages and important reasons to ensure the environment is well considered as these projects advance. Ensuring robust environmental management throughout the design and use of the irrigation projects will help to both maintain public support for irrigation expansion in Saskatchewan and support Saskatchewan's global brand as food production region that takes sustainably food production region that takes sustainability and environmental protection very seriously. Consumers are becoming increasingly savvy about how and where their food is produced. And it is in our long-term interest to get out ahead of these trends. Further with potential increased agricultural, agricultural inputs such as fertilizer, expected in the expanded irrigation region. It will also be important that uh, our agriculture producer aspire to for our nutrient stewardship, which is using the right fertilizer source at the right rate, at the right time, and in the right place. When nutrient application is not managed effectively in the new irrigation, any new irrigation project, it could lead to degraded water quality in the region and in the South Saskatchewan River. I know that our agriculture producers are already world leaders in agronomic and conservation practices such as no-till farming, so I have no doubt that our agriculture producer will adopt wetland conservation and for our nutrient stewardship throughout the project areas when applicable. These practices and others will help to establish Saskatchewan's brand as a food producing region that puts sustainability first. Slide seven. The beauty was not provided any new funds in the previous budget to continue our work, to continue in our water-related work beyond committing manpower to support the advancement of the irrigation projects by providing information and advice when asked and supporting Environment and Climate Change Canada and Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada as they work to establish the Canada Water Agency. Next slide. Establishment of the, uh, of the Canada Water Agency. And that will bring me to speak briefly on the establishment of the Canada Water Agency in Prairie Prosperity's WD's report. We suggested that water resources in the prairies would benefit from more coordination and collaboration among water stakeholders. At this time, the Canada Water Agency is most likely organization to bring together these prairie water stakeholder if that ends up one of their functions. CWA, Canada Water Agency's functions are being developed. We are continuing to support ACCC Environment Climate Change Canada, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada as they work to establish the Canada Water Agency. 
and when requested, we are sharing information with these departments based on our engagement and learning since early 2019. Our team, including myself and uh, my <clears throat> executives are representing uh, WD on various committees related to uh, the establishment of Canada Water Agency. If anyone from the public or if anyone attending this presentation wants to provide input on the Canada Water Agency, we have provided a link in this presentation deck. Comments are being collected through place C. Uh, as I understand, <laughs> ECCC and AFC are currently engaged with the provinces and few other organizations related to the Canada Water Agencies. And both these departments are planning to release a public document for input over the next few weeks. Next, next slide. And uh, that brings me to the end of uh, our formal presentation. At this time, I would be happy to answer any question about our report WD's involvement in supporting ECCC and AFC as they work to establish the Canada Water Agency are my thoughts on irrig irrigation expansion in Saskatchewan. And that's end of my presentation, Joel. Perfect. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Jalil. That was uh, that was perfect, cool. and again, it was a uh, it was a nice segue in uh, from what we talked about in terms of water management and. Yeah. Um, and the and sort of the the long overdue need to to start to uh, to look at our, our this resource more in depth. Um, just a quick question for myself: What sort of timelines do you sort of foresee in the in the development of the uh, the Canada Water Agency? I I think that's a dual good question, and uh, we are still working on it. But I'm hoping when the public document is released over the next few weeks, it will help to. Uh, outline at least um, some of the timelines because the consultation will be done over the next few months and uh, that will lead to the establishment of the Canada Water Agency. It, I'm hoping that it will have in some form uh, before the end of next year. I'm talking about the calendar year. Gotcha. Great. And again, it's uh, it's quite encouraging for us to see, you know, uh, you know, having many eyes sort of looking at the same problem and all sort of coming to similar conclusions. Um, mm -hmm. So that was that was great. Uh, I know you guys worked quite hard on 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 the study that you had done to see about the viability and so on and so forth. So that was that was a real um, real boost for us. Joel, I think it was all because of we had a great team and a great partnership with a number of organizations, both in the provincial government as well as. Uh, uh, as well as in the federal governments and you folks, I think we were quite helpful in yeah, moving, no. it, moving it forward. No, I appreciate it involvement no. with the, you and the other producers. Terrific. So, so any questions? Um, just looking in the comments, I don't see any hands raised. Any questions at this time? Oh, got a hand raised. Yeah, I have my team with me, so hopefully they will be able to answer those questions. For sure. Uh, Aaron, that's you. Fire away. Yeah, thanks, Joel. That was uh, that was a great presentation. I know uh, CEPA is going to be having a submission there for the wa water agency come here shortly okay. in the uh, middle of hopefully this winter if we can get everything in place. And I think that's going to be a valuable uh, yeah. valuable uh, tool for all of Canada to be utilizing. And I encourage everybody right. to uh, give us their thoughts on that. Uh, play what is it? Place speak. Please, please speak. Okay. Please well, that's... speak. And I Thank think you. there will be also public document released, um, and there will be follow up consultations as well. And I'm assuming that's the ECCC and the AFC will will do over the next few months. Yeah, right on. No, we look forward to participating with it. Absolutely. Terrific. And uh, if I can be of any help, we'll be happy to do it. I do have one question show up. Um, it's uh, we saw the Alberta government uh, 
an announcement a while back. Uh, what is missing in Saskatchewan to see something similar moving forward here? I think, uh, I mean, uh, still the Saskatchewan government is leading uh, um, in terms of uh, some of uh, the studies and uh, it's a huge project, to be honest. I mean, when you are looking at the almost uh, uh, 3.5 to $4 billion projects and it requires lots of resources. Uh, yeah. So for me, it is a uh, to make sure that both levels of government, provincial and federal governments are working together uh, among themselves uh, to ensure that resources are available. So I think the um, uh, the part which is missing is to having a conversation and come to some sort of agreement uh, about how uh, such a large projects can be can be financed. I think that's the part. I think there's no doubt that um, uh, I think there are a number of studies which have very clearly demonstrated uh, the benefits of irrigations, both to I'm talking about the publics as well as to the governments as well in terms of uh, uh, the tax revenue. Sorry. Thanks again for your uh, your presentation and, and answering those questions. Okay. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, with that, we'll uh, we'll start to move on to okay. the next presentation. Um, uh, uh, happy holidays again. and stay safe, guys.